calls with the opening remarks from the management. After which, we will have the forum open for the interactive Q and A session. I will now request the management for the opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thanks, Amita. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us on this call today. Uh, as usual, I will uh, make a brief introductory statement. Uh, I'm sorry that this time the call has been a little delayed. Uh, I was away on some personal work, so I could only take it up today. Uh, so as far as the quarter was concerned, uh, we had a reasonably okay quarter. Uh, revenues were up about 9% uh, in total. Um, while while uh, it was slightly below last quarter, the immediately preceding quarter. And on a six-month basis, the revenue was up about 14%. Um, where we, I think we did well was in improving the uh, gross margin. We now have in the quarter a 23% gross margin as against 21% earlier in the, in the previous quarter and 19% uh, in the comparable quarter. On a half yearly basis, margins are about 22%, uh, slightly above uh, the previous uh, six month period of 20%. Coming to the uh, segment, uh, in volume terms, uh, electrical wires, uh, volume was up by about 10%. While power cable was up by almost uh, 37%, although we had a low base in the pre previous uh, corresponding quarter. Uh, communication cable segment, the metal based products were stable, whereas the fiber based products uh, actually saw a dip, uh, primarily because the tenders that we were awaiting uh, have not yet uh, been announced. Uh, you might recall that the government had announced a plan of approximately 1,40,000 1, 1, crores to be spent on upgrading the uh, Bharat net, uh, network over the next two to three years. We were expecting some of those tenders to uh, open up. That has not yet happened. We now understand that those tenders would probably come to the bidding stage somewhere around December or January. So there's been a delay in that and consequently there has been also a shortfall in revenue. Uh, as far as the new product offerings are concerned, uh, the volumes were, were very good in both lighting as well as conduit products. Uh, switches were also positive, while uh, the other appliance uh, product lines were muted. Uh, I think the appliance lines, uh, there is still a, uh, there is still, there is still a uh, fallout of the inflationary trends that were there. While overall inflation has gone down, it has still not gone down to the extent that possibly people expected. And there has been a little bit of uh, sluggishness. We hope that during the first season this gets uh, reversed. Uh, profit for the year, for the quarter, was about 165 crores uh, compared to 136 crores in the corresponding quarter. That's an improvement of 21%. The other uh, uh, piece of information that we have is that the JV with calling, uh, the liquidation profits have uh, been received uh, and we, we uh, recognized a profit of about 12.5 crores in the quarter. With uh, this brief uh, statement, I open it up for questions. I'm happy to take questions from you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Shivam Mittal from Purnartha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, first, a couple of clarifications before coming to question. Uh, first, being on the Kitek side, 
like your uh, last quarter is valued as uh, 250 crore uh, capex will be done in fy24 and uh, 100 crore will be done in fy25 right uh, and uh, uh, when i see annual report so and in agm also so people uh, are told that uh, uh, 500 crore will be executed in next 18 to 20 months but nice uh, cash flow statement cash effect so it is just 60 odd crores so these numbers are actually not just i have so if you just clarify on the case sir on the expenditure will be uh, uh, you know they will not be front end right? the payments will happen uh, as the projects get to completion so what we uh, what we said in the previous uh, call was also that the major projects that are ongoing right now are the projects on eating the project on uh, uh, topic number 3 farm and added to it the expanded capacity on optic fiber cabling as well as the fiber draw downs uh, the e beam project uh, some of the money was already spent in the previous year so probably when uh, mr chaudhary spoke he also included the uh, money that was spent on the project but not yet capitalized so all is included uh, the eden project is currently uh, expected to go live by uh, first quarter next year that is uh, first calendar quarter next year uh, the uh, equipment is expected to arrive here sometime towards the end of december and then installation commissioning and testing will take the next 2 uh, to 3 months so we expect that we should close that project by uh, end of uh, march next year associated with that that particular project will require special uh, insulation material so we are also putting up a compounding plant uh, to to supply the insulation material there uh, that will also be ready by uh, march end or latest by middle of april that will also be ready so this will complete one project the three form project the building construction has started and uh, associated licenses clearances from various regulatory uh, authorities have all been secured and so we are uh, we are expecting the building to be completed by uh, june or so and uh, then for the equipment to be installed uh, tested and uh, commissioned so all that process we expect to complete by uh, somewhere around the uh second quarter uh, between september to november of next year the cash flow from all from that project will largely happen when the machine comes here which is somewhere around uh, uh june i believe so you will see that spend happening at that point in time uh okay. yeah and then the uh the two other projects that i mentioned the additional draw towers and uh uh or the expansion uh the, for the expansion project the building is already ready again that money was spent last year it's only the equipment that needs to come in and so as and when the equipment comes in is when the uh, cash flow will happen so you may not you may not see a linear uh, pattern of spending you will see uh, spikes and valleys in between okay Uh, sir, on uh, distributor count, uh, like uh, in February twenty three count call, so you mentioned uh, distributor count was about six eighty eight or six nine six eighty nine. Right. And and uh, in uh, in May twenty three count call, you you mentioned uh, uh, close to seven hundred number. Sorry. Distrib- close to seven hundred distributor count. Seven hundred. Right. Right. And when I see the annual report, so it is showing six hundred distributor. So under distributor count has been reduced or something. So there might have been some reading uh, between uh, February and the March. If I mean if there is somebody who is if there is someone who is non-performing, then obviously we have to read them out. So that exercise would have happened. Uh, currently, at the end of September, we have about close to 700 uh, distributors who are performing. So that it's only a uh, 
uh, matter of housekeeping because you you keep adding customers but not all of them perform according to expectations and so that would you do end up beating off some okay now it is 700 distributor right yeah 690 something so roughly 700 all right all right uh sir uh, so, uh, some of our peers has actually shown better performance in terms of volume growth uh we uh, hold significant share in organized wire market like 22% so uh i mean where where do we lack in terms of execution uh, i find other uh, i think we have explained uh, this in past conferences also we are a very small participant on the power cable business uh um, yes we are less than uh, we probably are around 1 1 and a half percent of that market uh, whereas uh, most of my peers are fairly large players and very very large players on the power cable side also so if you uh, unless you have the breakdown of their revenue numbers then the comparison becomes a little bit awkward uh, i think this time around uh, kei has reported numbers by um, product group Uh, but the other peers do not report it, so it's kind of difficult to uh, make a uh, one-to-one comparison. But we do know that some of them are very large. The cable market is approximately 22,000-23,000 to crores per year, out of which we are about 200 crores. So uh, we do not participate in that. So when you compare the performance numbers, it seems a little out of skew, uh, whereas uh, on the wire market we are doing fairly well and that is our largest uh, uh, base okay uh, so that's the you mentioned kgi uh, industry so they have guided uh, like 23 uh, 23 to 25% uh, kind of industry both in housing wire so uh, mainly uh, largely on, on account of uh, uh, smaller participation of uh, uh, less participation of smaller unorganized players so how how do you see uh, sir housing wire growth uh, like if industry is going to grow by 22.5% uh, sorry no, your voice is a little uh, uh, difficult to understand can you repeat the question again uh, may i use request you to use your handset mode please mr mittal uh, yes ma'am uh, so is it better now slightly better go ahead uh the kai industry has uh, uh, invited that house wire is expected to grow like 25% in this way right uh, on on the lesser participation of smaller unorganized players well there are so, quite a few unorganized players in the uh, in the general construction wire uh, because when you go to individual uh, regions there are regional players there are smaller players uh there is competition there but in yeah. terms of growth potential i do agree that there is a fairly large growth potential out there uh we have often been saying this housing and construction as an industry offers a fairly a stable and steady demand for a long period of time uh to come uh i mean as a, as a as a country i think there is uh there is a lag need for housing uh, to still uh, you know to fill the people's need and i think that sector will offer quite a lag uh, demand potential for some time to come so to that extent i do agree yes all right so how 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 much do we do we see uh, like if it is still going to go to maybe 25% So, how much volume growth we do we see in in next two to three years? Number one. I mean, we we have to be uh, definitely as good as the industry is not better. So otherwise, we will lose shares. So that is something that we are we are conscious about, and uh, that is another reason why we are uh, ensuring that our plan of distribution uh, uh, comes out successfully. All right. Uh, sir in this quarter uh, copper price is up by 8% year on year uh, like volume growth are uh, is uh, 10% and uh, we almost uh, like take 2.5% in terms of uh, high uh, copper price so can you see uh, uh, remaining 5 5.5% of kind of uh, price in uh, q3 on account of copper price 
Uh, it depends on where copper is. Uh, so as uh, if you look at October, prices fell, and uh, uh, I think the entire industry took a correction downwards. So it depends on where copper is at any point in time. Uh, these are this what the demand uh, scenario is. Uh, it's it's. Uh, it's it's something that one has to be watchful for uh, on, a, on a periodic basis. Uh, the action that you talk about, uh, it doesn't look like okay there was uh, X percent change in one period of time and that automatically translates into the similar. Uh, yeah. Cumulative, cumulative, cumulative transfer. Copper yeah. is. Uh, Copper constitutes a certain percentage of the total product cost. So if copper prices increase by 10%, it doesn't mean that I have to change my selling price by 10%. It doesn't work that way. All right. Uh, sir, how much do we have lag in terms of passing uh, like rise or uh, decline in terms of copper price to the end consumer? How much lag do we have? Normally, our lag is not very uh, long. Uh, I, I think the change will happen within a uh, matter of weeks. And like I mentioned, October there was actually a price drop. So if the prices today, uh, they are at about eight thousand two hundred dollars uh, per ton. Uh, a few weeks ago, they were at seven thousand eight hundred seven thousand nine hundred levels, and they dropped from eight thousand seven hundred to seven thousand nine hundred levels. So October. Uh, we took a price drop, and I, I think the other uh, players also would drop their prices. It depends on where copper is at any point in time. That is the largest factor that impacts uh, prices both ways, up or down. But you have to look at it in combination with where uh, PVC prices are, because these two are the two large uh, components of uh, the cost. All right, uh, sir. Uh, in this quarter, like uh, uh, as uh, uh, earlier mentioned, copper is up by eight percent. So if I see uh, the cost, the cost of goods sold as a percentage of revenue, so it comes around seventy-seven point seven percent. And uh, uh, last two quarters were like seventy-eight point seven percent and seventy-eight point nine percent. So uh, sorry, I I am not able to get your question. Your voice is not very clear. Uh, sir, uh, in in uh, Q2, copper is up by 8 percent, uh, and if I, if I see co cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales, it comes around 77.7 percent. Right. And uh, in previous two quarters, it was like 78.7 percent and 78.9 percent. Right. So I just want to know, like, copper price is up by 8 percent, but our co cost of goods sold has by reduced. So, including in Jibnawaljan. So, it is not one item. No, there are there are uh, more than uh, 2,000 SKUs. So, there will be certain items where the margins are better, and uh, therefore the uh, composition of which unit has sold more during this period would make a change. Also, it might mean that during this period there has been a uh, there is also a change in the PVC prices, so probably we have gained a little bit on that. So it's a combination, it's not just only copper, don't look at just only copper. Copper is a major mm -hmm. factor, I agree, but it's not the only factor. And in that way, if you compare, one year ago, the cost of goods sold was 81 percent. So we've been able to bring it down from 81 percent to 77 percent. So mm -hmm. there have been efficiency improvements, there have been uh, inventory gains, there have been purchasing gains. Or, and there have also been some uh, margin improvements on the uh, on product side. All right. Uh, so, uh, may I request yeah. you to join back the queue, please, as we have other participants waiting. Okay. okay. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Ingrid Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening, and thanks for the call. Belated wishes for Diwali. The first question on margins, uh, obviously there's a catch-up uh, still left, about a percent in my view. I uh, just wanted your understanding uh, because gross margins recovered 23, 
my sense is that you know sharing some bit of it for you know for the new distribution uh, change which you're doing right. so is it possible to look at another percent gain in gross margin and similar on the ebitda margin side if the prices are if the input prices are stable then there is possibility but if there is volatility then we will have to make adjustments as we go okay yeah right uh similar question was on working capital days i think you know we used to be like 55 60 right now it looks like last two quarter 35 40 days of sales uh what could be a sustainable level what should be resume uh well i think in the last uh, call uh, we mentioned that we are working with uh, an external consultant to see how we can realign our uh, inventory holding capacities as well as ensure uh availability uh at a fairly fairly high level i think some of those some of that work is starting to slowly pay off but i would say that about 50 days uh should be something that is sustainable get it get it and uh you mentioned on the tender side it's bit delayed i understand and you know good expecting december jan we're getting into elections uh what would this be we hear now uh you know things keep changing from uh, from from the uh from that side as the original announcement that came in uh, in in august was uh seven it is clear 1.4 lakh crores and uh, very soon we will uh, see the tenders coming out so it's now three months in bed and the tenders are still not uh not not out in fact there is a there is a uh, uh, i think they are calling the industry for consultations to to talk about the design and uh, uh stuff around that that is slated for some time early next month um, and then they will release the i mean they will then flood the tenders so uh you are right about the election part so i do not know how much of it will actually be done with me right so you know and i think this is pretty usual of you know, how women works and you know even mm-hmm. last time i think bar net tender generally are uh, you know we don't really know uh, when they actually come through so there right. is a lot of volatility right so what i'm trying to ask was essentially ofc my sense was you know last calls we discussed Uh, the growth is sustainable or not when i look at last six quarters is about 130 140 crore run rate uh, every quarter of revenue uh, that essentially means about uh, 550 crore of annual sales uh, should we assume growth going forward or it is still contingent on if we get these orders great if we don't we are stuck what what how should we think about it um uh, well eventually we are actually spending on that i mean uh spending at this point in time both from uh, the government as well as from the private players has been uh, muted in this quarter and i think you will have seen this in the result of the other uh, peers in the sector as well uh, but if we are talking about uh, 5g and other technologies connectivity and so on and so forth this trend has to happen whether it happens in the current quarter or next year it definitely has to happen and one you cannot start preparing after the tender is announced so you need to be a little you need to be prepared a little ahead uh, so we are continuing therefore with our investment in this uh, in this uh, in the segment and uh, uh, we believe that we will be able to complete more effectively uh, when the tender is get announced Good. And lastly, on the EBM side, I mean, my sense is the plant is delayed uh, quite a bit. Uh, haven't we seen any cost overruns there? I uh, know we have not. No, we have not. We haven't seen any cost overruns. In fact, we have uh, while while the uh, there has been a delay, uh, we were able to uh, negotiate with the new supplier uh, better rates. and uh, also more often on uh, uh, uh efficiency machines so i think we have uh, we been able to handle that part uh, so the machine is ready available to be uh, uh, can be dispatched any point in time 
the bunker in which it has to go in is being patched tonight. So we have asked the machine supplier to uh, dispatch it sometime in December, so that it, uh, by the time it comes here, the bunker, bunker is on stage. Got it. One, one last thing on Outlook, uh, essentially on the wire side, uh, what do you think about the market second half? You know, how does, how should, how should one look at wire market? Because we you know, understand inflationary pressures uh, have created some kind of divide between cables doing better than wires. Obviously, we're not, not comparing power cables, but even low tension cables have done better. Uh, your sense of, you know, next 12 month outlook in terms of wire demand, B2C, you know, maybe housing, commercial, what segments are doing better? Any views, please? I, I think uh, one does see a lot more activity on construction side. So that should lead to uh, more demand uh, as, those, as those construction projects come towards their, uh, you know, towards the uh, latter part of their uh, uh, cycle. Uh, so I think that, that should uh, come back again. And typically, the second half of every year has always been a uh, better half than the first half. So I'm, I'm hoping that this year is more efficient. Perfect. Thank you so much for answering my questions. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Sonali Sarkar from Jeffries, India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the margin expansion. We did a very good job of margin expansion this quarter, uh, generally, which we have been trying to do for the last few quarters. Uh, so uh, uh, anything you'd like to update as in uh, has the product mix changed or, you know, these are just economies of scale when it comes to good volumes that we saw in electrical uh, volumes? And what is the sustainable level of margins that we should be looking at going forward? So I have always maintained as far as electrical cables is concerned that somewhere around 14, 14% is a uh, uh, sustainable number. I think we've come back to that level. Uh, if you if you look at the last uh, a few quarters, uh, I think the worst that we had was one year ago. We were just under ten percent at the time, and from that from then onwards we've been we've been gradually improving. Last quarter was thirteen percent. This quarter is now fourteen and a quarter percent. Uh, I think this is a sustainable level. Uh, you're right in that uh, economies of scale do uh, give us the benefit of uh, better margins, uh, but I think 14 is something that is sustainable. Barring any quantity uh, shock, it should be possible. Understand. So on the communication cables front, uh, we uh, you did mention that the tender uh, has got delayed, uh, which we understand uh, for reasons beyond our control. But then going forward, if uh, say uh, there is a further delay, should we see weakness in uh, the uh, sales of communication cables even going further qu uh, quarters, or do you think uh, that should be? And also uh, your thoughts on the price of optic fibers globally? Well, right now the fiber prices are, uh, uh, are low. Uh, while the government acted uh, a couple of months ago on the uh, by by imposing uh, AD, uh, the uh, impact of that is uh, yet to be felt because I think whoever wanted to import had already imported the uh, product in the second quarter. Uh, we have not yet seen the final prices flying back up. Uh, I think we should be able to see it in the next three to six months. Uh, having said that, offtake from both uh, the government and uh, non-government uh, customers has been very limited in, over the last six months. Uh, uh, from the government side, I think it is it is the delay in the uh, tender finalization. Uh, but in the uh, private players, their uh, uh, their spend on uh, cables in the last one uh, three quarters has been slightly low. 
uh, I don't expect this to continue forever. Uh, I do expect this to catch up at some point in time. Uh, now, whether that happens in one or two or three quarters is something that uh, the is best. But uh, uh-huh. it should catch up and improve some. And then YTD, what has been the correction in fiber prices? YTD. Uh, I think they, we are still at uh, 315, I think, in terms of dollar prices. Understand, understand. So you mentioned that price, uh, we have taken price cuts in cables and wires in October because of the suffering for prices. Any quantum you'd like to... Uh, Depend on about 3 to 4 percent, depending on which uh, uh, SKU it was, uh, it will be more focused. Understand. And just the last question on uh, our uh, SMEG business or the other business. We saw, uh, I mean, reasonably healthy volume growth, uh, reasonably healthy sales growth, though the margins are yet to catch up. So any ideas on when can we break even and what are the amount of sales that we require for break even? That has not changed. I think we need to hit uh, higher than 200 to uh, make profit. Uh, I think right now the numbers are positive still, but that is only because uh, some of the ad costs come towards the tail end of the year, so uh, it's showing, it is not showing up yet. Uh, as and when those ad costs are actually incurred, uh, you might see a slightly different uh, position there. But I think 200 plus is something that is uh, uh, positive, that is result in positive. Understand. Very helpful, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a question from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. So you were mentioning about uh, the lower OF and OFC prices. So if you could come again, uh, what have been the decline, say uh, for for June to September, and e- even uh, going forward, how are the what are the price trends for uh, OF and uh, OFCs currently? So I like, that's what I said. Uh, the government acted on uh, representation made by the industry. There was a lot of dumping coming in from. Uh, uh, China, Indonesia, and Vietnam. So they have imposed AD. Uh, that was imposed sometime towards the end of uh, August. So the impact was not immediately felt in the quarter. I am hoping that as uh, we as we go, then the imports will be more uh, expensive and uh, uh, prices will stabilize. Uh, for the prices to pick up, then the demand also has to pick up. And so that is dependent on how quickly the uh, tenders get floated uh, because the quantity of uh, fiber that is required for the uh, Parasmet phase 3, the original number was somewhere around uh, 20 million fiber kilometers. I understand they have scaled it down a little bit. And so now the latest figure that we saw was about 14 million fiber kilometers. But even that is a substantial quantity to be made available in uh, in two years. Our total consumption on a yearly basis is only about 18 million. So you are asking almost 70% of that to come in, uh, in two years. That's that's a big ask. So prices would then uh, look up, I, I think. Now, the question is, uh, what period do you, uh, do you give that? Uh, that would all depend on when the bank is floated, when is the cable expected to be delivered, and when is it going to be made. So it could be as quick as uh, six, to eight, six to eight months, or it could be longer than one, 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 one and a half years. So it depends on uh, those factors. And uh, I don't think I'm in a position to get that right now. Sir, what is the current? I think so many of the big play, large players domestically has uh, have uh, ramp up their capacities with greenfield projects also. So what what should be the current uh, uh, OFC OF and OFC capa- uh, capacity for the country? And so for the price trends, uh, 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 what are the current prices? If you could. Just... Uh, I said you no. Know, fiber is I think uh, the last I heard was uh, 
there is a tpl there is uh, birla kurukawa uh, and i think aksh so uh, i don't know what it is there is there is, there is uh, i think about uh, 30 million plus 30 million plus and and for osc sir uh, osc capacity is difficult to define because um, the construction of the cable uh, you are talking about some cables with 256 fiber some with uh, 96 some with 48 some with 24 so when somebody tells you in kilometers uh, they are telling you cable kilometers and that doesn't really make uh, sense because you might have a uh, cable with just one fiber in it and you might have another cable with 96 fibers in it so uh, they are not really comparable um, so, I, but I think there is enough capacity to consume the 30 million uh, kilometers of fiber. Actually, AD which came, uh, which was implemented, does, does it have any clause that uh, uh, that if uh, if a manufacturer is is it is it a plain vanilla type or does they have any specification for the implementation? Yeah, I didn't get the question. Sir, uh, this anti-dumping duty is a plain vanilla duty, or uh, if, if somebody goes for some customization and uh, re, it's re a particular, it's for a particular grade of fiber, which is the most commonly used grade. Okay. Right. And last point was sir on uh, the EHP part, sir. Uh, what percentage uh, of our uh, sales uh, come from the extra high voltage cable sir and what's the order booking and, and the outlook on the same? Uh, the EHP business is conducted through a joint venture. So that is not reflected in the revenue numbers that we reported. Uh, it's a 50 50 joint venture, it's consolidated on uh, you know uh, uh, it's not a line by line consolidation, it's only a participation consolidation that happens. Uh, joint venture consolidations are slightly different as opposed to subsidiary consolidation. Uh, but the JV has an order book, I think current order book is about uh, slightly under 200 crores. Uh, their, uh, their revenue for the first half was about 70 crores, I think. Uh, they are still uh, uh, there, there still is a loss there. We hope that uh, with this order book, they should be able to clean up that loss. Is it about to, what, what should be the big pipeline for the segment? Uh, the big pipeline uh, could be around uh, 1500 to 1600 crores. Okay, and so this is uh, mainly to the state utilities and, and the metro rail category should be, you know, we should assume that as a, a final consumer or. Uh, yeah, so the large uh, consumers would be the uh, uh, transmission companies. Uh, you know, some uh, uh, some grades go to the metros. Uh, sometimes there are also generating companies which uh, require this to evacuate uh, the power that they generate. So la the the largest portion of consumers would be state utilities and uh, metros. But then you also require uh, these in uh, very large industrial uh, places. Let's say there is a steel plant uh, coming up. That would require a, uh, many of your uh, infrastructure facilities would require uh, airports, uh, ports. Uh, these guys would require uh, fairly large amounts of these cables. Uh, I think there is a need also in the oil fields. So there is an application available everywhere, but then construction uh, requirement or design requirements would be different for different applications.
I missed your last point. You mentioned IV. I, I could not hear you perfectly. Uh, so I said uh, the uh, the besides the utilities, you have metros. Right. Uh, you also have infrastructure projects. So large uh, infrastructure projects like airports or uh, seaports. Uh, those would also require it. Plus, huge industrial plants. Uh, let's say there is a steel plant coming up or a uh, fertilizer plant coming up. Those people would also require uh, large gauge uh, cables. Right. Last you mentioned 80 crore was the revenue from the JV. 70. So 70 crore for the first half or for the quarter? Sir? For the for the first half. For the first half. Yeah. And we have an order book of 200 crore. Yes. See, the, the uh, business is slightly different as opposed to uh, the business that is run in uh, the cable entity. The, uh, while, while the major part of the business comes from supply of cables, uh, the contracts that the uh, utilities give out are usually turnkey contracts. So your requirement or responsibility is to supply the cable, lay the cable, joint it where it is required, and also uh, terminate it on two sides and charge the uh, cable. So it is a it's a donkey job, and uh, you can recognize revenue as you complete uh, portions of the job. So I might have made the cables, but if the uh, right of way has not been given to me by the customer. Uh, I am unable to recognize full revenue at that point in time, unless I lay it and complete that portion. So it's a slightly longer uh, gestation period for each of these products. But we are into the EPC play also. Uh, not only we are supplying manufacturing, as a game, but as also game. yes, we are into EPC. We you have to be because uh, the. The customer, the utility wants to talk to only one person. Correct, correct. Sir. And here is also one concept for VCB line comes sir. Uh, that is the only way through which these cables are manufactured and uh, current meter which uh, I am missing the terminology. Uh, well, the as you go into higher grades, higher voltage grades. Yes, sir. So and a higher sizes of conductors. Uh, the vertical uh, insulation technology that we use is definitely better because you get a conductor which is right in the middle of the uh, insulation, which is completely and very clearly centered. Mm -hmm. As if you use uh, horizontal insulation processes, then the force of gravity acts on the insulation and uh, you get a cable with uh, which is which is oh, slightly oval in shape, which means there is more insulation on one side than on the other, and that leads to uh, performance problems as well as uh, issues over the life of the cable. These are very expensive cables, so if you're going to spend 25 crores over a length of uh, five or ten kilometers. Then you expect the life of the cable to be at least 25 to 30 years, right? So you want to ensure that the uh, customer gets the right product and also the right light for it. So there, therefore, there the vertical process is preferred, and we have the vertical process. Uh, at lower sizes, so 11, 22, 33 kV, then it doesn't make sense because it is much more expensive. And you can control the, uh, the the force of gravity to some extent, and still get the product uh, that is desired. Okay. So we have our VCB line sourcer, I think. So only one manufacturer in the country. We have a VCB line. We have provision for three. So as uh, business improves, uh, we can with uh, minimal investment add uh, two more lines. And so here, who are our nearest competitors in this segment? Uh, today, in the uh, ESV segment, there is Universal, who is by and large the largest in the country. Then there is uh, a Korean company called LS, who is a set up a factory in, uh, in India. Uh, there is KEI, 
uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, polycat and have is a lot in the uh, 220 and above grade but they have uh, uh, they are in the 66 and uh, 110 grade thank thank you sir for all the elaborate answers sir and and all the best so we we are emphasizing on a on a capex for the oft segment from both the telcos as well as the government sir for the telcos i think so they they have done this provisioning of uh, expenditure so they are not spending the money currently on on the same i heard no, you were i think they are they are spending it but they are not spending as much as uh, i would expect them to okay. because of, without the proper fiberization a, a 5g will not be uh, will not be in, in the same play that, that is that needs yeah that needs the fiberization of that is true that is true because if you want the kind of connectivity that 5g requires then you need much more fiberization okay. so so they can delay it for the time being but they have to do eventually have to proceed with it correct okay. thank you once again sir and all the best thank you thank you We have the next question from the line of Sonali Sagarkar from Jaipur, India. Please go ahead. So thank you for the follow-up opportunity. So two questions. Firstly, uh, on the in the electrical segment, you know, uh, around 60-65 percent is construction, and then we have agri, auto, industrial, and power cables. So could you help us understand broadly? And approximately, what would be the EBITDA margins of each of these sub segments? uh well the the uh, uh i i let me not get into the numbers right now but i i can give you in terms of uh, uh which is the lowest and where it is better sure it sure. auto will be the lowest uh there are industrial consumers uh very thin margins uh for the industries agri and uh, uh and and construction will be top of the heap uh, power cable is uh, there are two segments to it again uh, there is some that is going through the market through the distribution and some which are made to order and uh, made to order ones are all uh, uh, primarily b to b uh, where the margins may not be very high uh, once the go to distribution the margins should be okay understand then secondly on uh, the company's overall distribution uh, what is the current count dealers retailers and how much of that is exclusively for smeg and how much overlaps with our cables and wires okay, we have about uh, close to 700 now uh, distributors uh, 66000 retailers were built in the quarter uh the secondary sales through retailers in the quarter was about uh, 300 crores and uh, uh what was the other question uh so how much if if we have a, a you know quantification of how much is overlapping or the distribution okay the the uh, yeah uh, we have uh, you know the the only condition that we have put is if if there is a retailer who is uh, selling a competing brand in a particular segment uh, then uh, we don't service that particular product to him uh, so let me give you an example if there is a retailer who is selling philips lights and obviously our lights do not go on a shelf but uh, our switches and cables can so that's the only uh, condition that we have put as long as as long as they do not deal in a competing product we have understand so these 700 distribu- distributors they are not exclusive right they are multi brand is my understanding correct multi brand because at a retailer's point of view if you say i mean even a distributor if you say that you have to be exclusive uh, he doesn't make the roi then yes those days of exclusive uh, distributor i think uh, there, there will not be many of them there might be a few but there will not be many uh, so so what we have done therefore is to come out with these 
uh, experienced shots. Uh, we now have. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the count of how many of these experienced shots that we have. We started in Chennai, then we have gone in uh, Baroda, in Mumbai, in uh, many of other cities. We have an experienced shop where uh, under one store you get to see and feel all our product lines. Understand. Very helpful. So just just the last question from my side. In the volume growth terms, uh, power cables we have seen 37% growth. That's very encouraging. And in the electrical wires, it's 10%. Of course, 10% is also healthy. But do you foresee some kind of deceleration compared to the earlier quarters in electrical wires? Uh, the second quarter was slightly lower than the first quarter. First quarter was much uh, better. Uh, as far as the wires is concerned, but I think that's uh, partly a seasonal issue also. Uh, okay. I do believe that as more of these projects come towards their conclusion, uh, the wire sales should pick up. Understand. So, and uh, festive sales in the FMEG, any thoughts on that? Any color? How has been the festive season? Um, well, I, I am still getting the numbers, so I think I don't want to preempt it. Understand. Very helpful. Thank you for taking the follow up question. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Shiva Mittal from Purnatha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, thank you for uh, again uh, providing opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, other expenses as a percentage of sale was 5.54% in quarter one, and uh, Q2 it is 6.4%. So, 1% uh, increase. So, any reason for that? Other expenses? Yeah. Ah, okay, we have taken a small provision for the uh, JV. The JV has been making uh, losses, so we have made a provision for the loss. All right. Uh, second is, sir, uh, is the liquidation cost already included in, uh, in the quarter or uh, yet to be accounted? I'm sorry, what liquidation cost? Uh, whatever we have uh, currently uh, going on court cases. Oh, that is not nothing to do with the company. That is within two shareholders. All right. Yeah, uh, so th th that was the last question from us. Okay. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Anurag Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. So my question is, uh, like, what is the current capacity utilization of the company? And do you think that in the next three years, you will need a uh, capital expenditure in different business segments? And if yes, like, what, what would be the planned uh, capital expenditure in the next three years? So we have detailed our capital expenditure. Uh, we shared this in the last uh, couple of calls. So most of the major expenditure is happening on the optic fiber and uh, related uh, areas. So we are setting up a preform plan. Preform is the basic raw material from which you draw fiber. Uh, we are setting up the plan that uh, the building construction has started. Uh, other approvals from the environmental agencies all, all have been secured. The machine is uh, ready to be shipped sometime in uh, March of next year. And we hope that the building construction will be over by around May, uh, April or May, when the machine will also arrive here. And we are expecting that commissioning to happen sometime around November next year. Uh, that's one project. Uh, we have uh, spent money on uh, an additional factory for uh, the optic fiber cable. We have not populated that with the machines as yet. Uh, so as soon as there is clear visibility on the uh, tenders from the government on uh, the Bharat Net program, uh, we will place orders for those equipment and 
so they have a lead time of about 7 to 8 months and then installation and commission uh, we also expect that from the time the tenders are announced by the time the government completes the order issue formalities will be anywhere between 8 to 10 months so that should go in phase uh, we uh, in addition to this we are increasing our fiber capacity our fiber draw capacity today is about uh, just under 4 million kilometers a year we are taking that up to 8 million uh, those uh, those construction activities will commence maybe from january uh, so that's on one side on the electrical cable side we are setting up a tv in plant uh, if you if you are part of the conversation a little ahead uh, you would have noticed that this particular project has been delayed uh, we initially selected a sonics uh, machine but then because of the uh, relations between the two countries after galwan uh, we were not able to get anybody from there to complete the installation while the equipment is ready in china it couldn't be shipped so we had to change supplier we now got in a korean supplier who is supplying equipment and uh, that equipment is expected to arrive sometime in maybe in korea in december we be here in january and the building for that is uh, almost ready so we should have the uh, machine up and running by march of uh, next year so that that would enable us to uh, supply cables to the solar application also improve our uh, offerings on the auto cable and uh, uh, wherever thermal stability is required wherever uh, uh, performance on uh, you know uh, where the requirement will be to handle different changes in atmospheric conditions those will be required so there i think we will be able to uh, uh, make our offerings so all these programs effectively will cost the company approximately uh, somewhere around 400 crores some of it is already been spent and the balance will be spent over the next uh, 12 to 18 months so this is these are programs already in place you asked me about where the capacity utilization is at an overall level it is slightly above 60% uh individual plants could be different uh auto cables for example is uh, much higher and we are expanding in that uh, area we are adding capacity at our rookie factory that should be ready by next year so these are areas where we have uh, uh, where we are spending money our uh, the way we work is when we see that the capacity utilization is coming up to somewhere around 75 to 80% we plan for the next uh, expansion so as and when that happens we will plan for it thank you sir that answer go sir yes sir thank you sir thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today On behalf of Finolex Cables Limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines